was no more than 200 million. How could there be an army of men of military age of 200 million? It seemed impossible. In fact, throughout history, many thought it was symbolic. Yet today, China alone has military reserves and a standing army that together would amount to 200 million soldiers. Remember, it's kings of the earth. Add that to Japanese, Thai, India, and obviously the manpower is already there to produce that army in our generation for the first time in history. An equally intriguing prophecy is found in Revelation 16. There it says that the great river Euphrates, which has never dried up throughout history, has been an impenetrable barrier militarily between east and west, is going to dry up supernaturally in the judgment of God to allow that huge army of 200 million men to cross dry shod on its way to Israel for the Battle of Armageddon. How is this possible? Well, the Turkish government has built the Ataturk Dam in the headwaters of the Euphrates River in Turkey. And by the push of a button, they can now cause the entire water flow from the Taurus Mountains in Turkey to cease so that no longer would the waters flow and the Euphrates could be dammed up and shut and dry shot. One of the most interesting to prophecies to me is found in Jesus' prophecy found in the Gospels. He talks to us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world, and then the end shall come. Now think about this. Until our generation, the gospel had never been preached in all the nations. But today, with electronic media like TBN, with print media throughout the world, with radio, with the Bible being printed in almost every dialect, with the Wycliffe Bible translators, the Bible and the Bible's message of the gospel is being preached in all the world. Christianity is now growing at the fastest rate of any religion in the world, double that of the next religion. It's growing at 4.7%. The fact is, Christianity in the last 60 years is growing at 1,300% compared to only 400% growth in world population. And that part of the church, that 900 million that are evangelical Bible-believing Christians, they are growing at 8% at a straight-line projection, which of course never happens. By 2026, the entire population of the world would be evangelical Bible-believing charismatic Christians. Obviously, that won't happen. Straight line projections always fall off. But the truth is, we have never in history seen a growth of the church such as is happening today. And the part of the church of the two billion that is growing, the fastest, is evangelical, conservative, Bible-believing Christian. We are living in the last days. And Jesus said, when the gospel is preached in all the world, then the end shall come. Another question we're asked is from Matthew 24:32. When Jesus spoke of the fig tree and said that the generation that saw the fig tree bud again and put forth leaves would not pass away until he came, and then he said, the generation that sees this thing happen will not pass until I come again, and they'll see, all, see it all. Well, I was born in 1948. Many of these listeners to this program were born in that decade. In our natural lifetime, Jesus is saying, I believe, that he's going to come. Now, we're not date setting because there are three generations that are given in the Bible. One is the natural generation of 40 years of rulership. There's 13 different periods of rulership of David, Solomon, King David, etc., 40 years. There's a generation of 100 years that's used several times. But the natural generation is found in the book of Psalms where it says that a man's life would be 70 years or if by reason of strength 80. I believe Jesus is speaking of a natural lifetime, a generation of people. That if you're alive to see one event, the rebirth of Israel in 1948, if you are not killed by accident or early disease, you will likely be alive to see a second coming. That's exciting. One other aspect I'm often asked about is, is there another specific prophecy that confirms that the generation that sees the rebirth of Israel will be alive to see the coming of Messiah? And the answer is yes. It's found in Psalm 102, verse 13 to 16. And here's what God says. He says that when I will build up Zion, I shall return in glory. Now, for 2,000 years, Zion, Israel, and Jerusalem was in ruins. If you look at pictures as I have of Jerusalem in 1885, 
outside the ruined walls of that city, there was nothing, nobody living, not Arab, not Jew. It is only in the last hundred years that the population of Jews has come back from all nations of the world, and Arabs have moved in from Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, and other countries. The population has expanded. Jerusalem has expanded in nine specific directions, exactly as Jeremiah predicted. My friends, we are living in the last days. Jesus said, when Zion shall be built up, he shall appear in glory. There is the promise that in our lifetime, we're going to see the coming of the Son of Man. First for his church at the rapture, to take us home to glory and the marriage seat of Christ and the judgment seat of Christ where rewards will be given. And then we'll return with Christ seven or so years later. And we will see for ourselves eyewitnesses of Armageddon, eyewitnesses of the defeat of Antichrist, the kings of the east, the Antichrist and false prophet cast alive into the lake of fire, Satan in prison for a thousand years, and the kingdom of God launched on earth. It's exciting to be a Christian in these last days, my friend. It's exciting to understand Bible prophecy and to know when we're living. He said, look up, your redemption draws nigh. God bless you. Did you realize that Bible prophecy is accurate to the exact, precise day of the rebirth of Israel? It's an astonishing statement, but it's absolutely true. This was a prophecy found in the Old Testament that, in fact, has not been explained up until now by any of the Bible commentators. I discovered it a few years ago, and it has been subsequently discussed by many, many Christian prophecy teachers around the world. But the rebirth of Israel was predicted precisely by the prophet Ezekiel 25 centuries ago. It's surely one of the most astonishing prophecies found in the Bible. The rebirth of Israel, May 15, 1948. The Bible prophesied that it would happen on a special day. We find in Isaiah 66, verse 8, Who hath heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. One day. Most nations are evolved over centuries. England and France and Germany and Syria and Egypt did not get born in one day. You can't point to a day in which they came into existence. But Israel is such a nation. On May 15, 1948, Israel was born. It took its place on the stage of world history, was accepted by the United Nations, and many nations around the world as a legitimate nation once more, after almost 2,000 years in the graveyard of the nations. Ezekiel chapter 37, Ezekiel saw a valley full of dry bones. And when God said to him, Son of man, preach unto these bones, prophesy unto them, and say, Join bone to bone, sinew to sinew, muscle to muscle, and let skin come upon them, and I will breathe my breath of life into them. And he goes on to say that they will become an exceeding great army. How is that possible? For 2,000 years, Israel had been dispersed among 70 nations. Population had been decimated. Yet in 1948, May 15, Israel took its place around the table of nations. Israel has become an exceeding great nation, an exceeding great army able to withstand 200 million Arab enemies that have tried repeatedly to destroy it and cannot and will not. This subject, the rebirth of Israel in 1948, is one of the most fascinating that I have had the privilege to research and study. remarkable prophecies found in the Bible is that May 15, 1948, the exact rebirth of Israel, was actually predicted 25 centuries earlier by the prophet Ezekiel. I'm going to get into that, but I want to point out a couple of principles. In the Bible,